Hi everyone, welcome to Boxing Blogs and guys and please if you're new to this channel make sure you click the like and of course the subscribe button right now and also go to the notification bell icon, click it and select all. So anytime I drop a new banger, a new exclusive, you will definitely be notified. I'm Raya with our brother, the Hurricane, I call him the Hurricane, he said that's not his name but that's not his, nick his nickname but a lot of people call him all sort of names but I think that Hurricane is just what fits him in a way um this interview like i don't know what to say like is it, it it took me like more than a year to get it <laughs> that shows you how much or how much important um uh, our nigerian brother is especially when he's very busy with things and he's been working on coming up you know and concrete division and right now the recognition is getting amazes me excites me in a way and i cannot wait to see him back in the ring uh brother thanks for joining me thank you for the opportunity i'm glad uh, to be here. <laughs> no 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 more cheating i i suppose i suppose to thank you that <laughs> <laughs> i was supposed to thank you that ah I just yeah, was thank you for the biggest voice in Nigerian boxing uh, media. So you know, it's uh, it's an honor to be here today. It's Thanks, an brother. Honor for you to give me the opportunity to speak to your speak on your platform. Yeah, I told my audience, you know, my audience yesterday that I was going to interview the Hurricane. A lot of people who knew was the Hurricane. It was the Hurricane. I said, don't worry. Once the interview drop, you will definitely get to know who he is. And uh, let's talk about you. You know, you're from Nigeria, from Edo State. Well, the first time I heard that, I was a little bit surprised. I thought you were from Delta. You know your name, Akwe Jiri. I just say beautiful guy. I don't like you. <laughs> uh, uh, it's Akwe East. You're going to go there. Um, I was born in Lagos, Nigeria. Grew up in Lagos, Nigeria. Went to grew up in Lagos and for Harket before I came to the United States for school and you know continue with my career. Um, how was it like for you? You know, um, how did you fall in love with the with the sweet science? Um, I mean, I always knew I was going to fight. You know, and I didn't really know if it was MMA or boxing. Um, I was always interested in it. Um, I went to Lumen Christi in Nigeria, which is a boarding school in Urumi, um, in Edo State. So, um, the privilege. The blessing I got from Morovon and Christy was that we got to fight every day. It was a boys boarding school. I got my ass whooped. I whooped a lot of asses. So from there, I kind of like built my um, immunity against immunity from free and fighting. Um, I always knew I was going to fight. You know, I watched uh, Floyd Mayweather a lot. Watched a lot of uh, Lennox Lewis, who was my favorite fighter growing up. Um, and uh, when the opportunity presented itself in 2016 for me to start um, being a, uh, an amateur athlete, I took it and I uh, just ran away with it from then. Oh, that was interesting. Now you have seven wins on your record yes, against sir. against very good, you know, uh, fighters. I like your name is not out there yet, but I've told people that once your name gets out there, it's going to be a problem for a lot of people. You know, I I reacted to the interview you did with Sky Sport, which I think was very good. And I, it's very very weird to see someone that's coming up to have that self belief. How how is it like? How I mean, how did it develop that self belief? Is it the Nigerian spirit as in you or what? I mean, that's a that the Nigerian spirit is a part of it because you come out from Nigeria and you know that okay, you don't have the blessings that everybody has coming up when you get to where you're going, you see all the little opportunities. You know, you can literally be whatever you want to be. Um, you just have to make the decision and, you know, make it happen from there. 7-0, um, 7 KO. Um, there's a whole lot of work that's under that 7-0, 7, 7 KO that the regular person would not see. Um, I would say that I'm actually coming out to the, to the public very early. I was not supposed to be coming out to the public at this time or supposed to come out much later in my career um but you know um like my mom used to say a goldfish can't hide you know um if you're good you're good and they'll find you um i've had a good amateur career i've had 
Um, I, even after my amateur career, I took a year off and went into like training camp, a personal training camp with my coach, Glenn Johnson, who is known as a world warrior if you're a boxing enthusiast and a fan. Uh, he was a former 2004 fighter of the year, so he's kind of a public figure in boxing. You know, I took a year and, you know, I really, really worked on my skills for the professional game. Uh, I had a very successful amateur career. I knocked everybody out. By the end of the day, as amateurs, you know, you can – you can have a successful career that might not translate to the pro game. And I happened to meet Glenn at that time during my transition. And uh, I, I, I took a year off, off of, you know, competing and really, really worked on my skills and sparring. I sparred the best. It put me in with the most dangerous guys. I held my own. I learned a lot from them. I picked their brains. You know, my confidence grew. So that's why you see today, um, Media, big, big time media entities, Sky Sports, Sun UK, they're coming out um, speaking to me. You know, it's, it's unusual, but the what you don't see is the body of work that is under that 7 and 0 or 6 and 0, as at the time when I, I, I started getting that type of publicity, you know. And uh, the goal is, I guess, like I said, you know, fight for a title, hopefully by the end of next year or. In 2022, I should hopefully be a, a worldwide household name. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to see where that's going to lead me. I also read somewhere that you are an engineer. Is it um, true or what? Yeah, I mean, every Nigerian is an engineer. If you're growing up in a Nigerian household, you can only be a, a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, a surgeon, you know. So I also happen to be one of those Nigerian kids that had to go to school for mechanical engineering. I obviously couldn't go to school for arts. I couldn't go to school for theater. I couldn't go to school for dance, you know, because while I was in school, my mom was looking at my grades. She didn't care about anything else that I was doing but my grades, and I had to graduate. So um, fortunately, I graduated with a degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Miami. Um, I also went and I got my master's, um, master's degree from the University of Miami. I'm a, I'm a licensed um um, engineering training and by the end of this year I should be a licensed professional engineer so I should be able to which is most likely which is the highest um, um, uh, level of engineering you can achieve in the state of Florida so um, yeah I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an engineer that's my that's my profession outside of being a, a outside of knocking people up for money yeah, I mean, looking at this last knockout you know man that was very impressive the guy said Looks like the guy didn't want any more. The guy was like, no, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. So uh, your power, you know, has been talked about a lot. I've asked people that I spoke with you. I think I spoke with someone in the uh, Francis uh, Sanchez camp. You know, who Francis told me, yeah, yeah who, to, who told me that, that you hit very hard. Uh, I also spoke with uh, someone that was present when you and um, mm -hmm. uh, the Godzilla, I know what he missed part. Oh, I know what he missed uh, I, I was like I saw you know I, I posted a clip that was that was <laughs> a two that joined juggernauts going at it <laughs> yeah, I was I was, I, I was that was that experience I mean I was blessed to spar with those guys um Honore is a former uh, Nigerian Olympian um he's 18 wins and one loss he's actually a very good friend of mine um a graceful he sparred multiple rounds multiple times um, he's a very, very skilled fighter. Um, unfortunately, he's a Nigeria. So, I mean, if you're a Nigeria, you know that Nigeria doesn't really provide the, uh, the amenities and the opportunities to flourish as, a, as an athlete. It is what it is. We know our country. Um, uh, right, except, your, except, then, except your football player. Even no, then, you still mm -hmm. don't provide the amenities. It just has to be big time. Um, you know, um, Frank Sanchez, I know he's a world amateur champion. Um, actually, he asked me for sparring, which was, I think this was, uh, I think this was last year. I can't remember when this was, but he's a really good guy. You know, he's, uh, he's, I think he's a cruiserweight coming into the heavyweight division. Very fast, very skilled. Um, I mean, I mean, I, I, we don't discuss sparring, you know, that's just the arena rule in boxing, but. No, no, yeah. no. I mean, I know you don't discuss sparring. I'm just saying like. I, I, as a guy who is very into the sport of boxing, and I'm yeah, like, I mean, you as a boxing guy, you would know, you would know um, internal information on, you know, and how boxing works and the things that go on, you know, in training camps and sparring and all that. But to the general public, we don't discuss 
internal information. It's just an unwritten rule in boxing. Um, but yeah, Frank Sanchez is an amazing dude, you know. Um, I think he's ranked in the top 10 in the world right now in the WBA or WBO, one of them. Um, he's actually a world contender right now. Um, he's, uh, he's a good guy, you know. He, he gave a good show in his sparring. We went a few rounds. You know, he's, uh, he's not bad. He's not bad. I'll say that. He's not bad. You know, mm -hmm. uh, about, about my power, you know, my power is something that keeps coming. You know, it's still under development. You know, I, I, have, a, I have a wild power. Um, I'm just, I just need to learn how to control it. You know, sometimes you have a big engine and you don't really know how to put it on a racetrack. So I need to know how to uh, control my power and direct it specifically to somebody's chin, if that makes sense. I've also heard that uh, you hold a lot of your sparring partners, you know. Like I said, we don't discuss sparring. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I, but I heard, I heard that. I would tell you, I would talk to Abby. <laughs> hey, man, listen, man. I'm, never, I'm not, I'm not going to confirm nor deny what you've heard. You know, I'm not going to say it's true or it's not true. But, um, yeah, all the sparring partners that you've heard that I've sparred with, um, I can tell you that they are very, they are world contenders and they are very good at what they do. They're super skilled. Um, their confidence on another level. They are um, world. I mean, they're world champions in my opinion, and they're guys that you know will be household names in the near future. You know, and I think uh, I think we're going to see each other in the future. I mean, like I said, I'm blessed to share the ring with them in the training session, and I mean, they've helped me more than I've helped them. You know, I most likely helped them for a fight or so, but they've helped me in my development because. Um, you don't get those kind of fighters out of nowhere, you know, to spar with. You don't get that kind of experience, you know. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to say I'm blessed to train with those guys like that and learn from them. I like the part you're on, though. Like, it's amazing to see you develop into a world-class fighter, which I hope you do. Because, you know, this platform right at BBC, like, I remember the first time I sat down and even thought about... Um, creating a platform to help Nigerian boxers, uh, on the ground boxers, uh, most, uh, mostly, like to help them get their name up there until they get to the, before they go uh, mainstream in a way. Yeah. And I'm glad that uh, he's been successful so far and with you guys help, you know, Nigerians and some other nationalities like the Americans and New Zealand people, people from all over the world, right, me? Mm -hmm. But Nigerians have been very, very helpful uh, when it comes to supporting the channel. Uh, yeah, and, Nigerians uh, are amazing people, man. I mean, uh, like, you know, I go uh, back home uh, to Nigeria every, every three times a year, three to four times a year. I love Nigeria. I love anything that has to do with Nigeria. And Nigeria might not have the money to support you. You know, they might not send you cash apps or Venmo, but they're always going to be there, you know, commenting, you know, pushing you. I mean, Nigeria is the reason why Anthony Joshua has all the worldwide love he has today because Nigerians have embraced him as one of their own, you know? So, I mean, you can never go wrong coming from a country like Nigeria. I am blessed to be a Nigerian and I wear it on my sleeve. I'm proud. I'm actually, I'm obnoxiously proud to be a Nigerian. It annoys people at times, but I tell people you can't really understand what it is to be a Nigerian unless you're really, really from there. You know, you know it is hard to see i mean it is nice that you say that you know what i mean that you say that because a lot of our i mean i don't want to mention name, but there, there are a lot of our people like people who've made it outside nigeria maybe they are born there or maybe they grew up there i like, just like you like went to america and they tend to forget about nigeria they just now they, they get sucked into the into the american lifestyle or western lifestyle and forget about nigeria and just be like okay if it doesn't benefit me i don't really care you know but I like the fact that you have, you're a Pigeon like me, you know, because I, 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 the first time I wrote you, I messaged you, I mean, your response was very uh, respectful in a way. I never expected that to be, though, because someone recommended uh, you to me saying that I should check this guy out. And I checked you out. I said, like, okay, uh, you're a former basketball player. Um, so I thought you were different people. You know what I mean? So... I couldn't really figure out is he the same is he the same guy or I don't know one. So I could the thing got a guy the beef from my say wow, the guy looked different for a year. But he looked different for a year. Yeah. What the, the same they be twins, you know what I mean? <laughs> like 
that really tr- yeah. that, that, that really confused me until I got it right. And I said, oh, yeah. he was a former basketball player who, be- who later, you know, um, put- chased his dream in, in, the, in boxing. So now, looking at your height, 6'8", you are a giant, what we call giant. You know, <laughs> you your cause your cause Casala for this division. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's his job, man. I mean, just going back to what you said, you know, um, people in Nigeria have different different experiences. I was blessed that my parents had money coming up, so um, I won't say they had money, but we were we we're not hungry and we had everything that we wanted. So my experience growing up in Nigeria was not the same as other people's experiences of suffering, which I have seen. You know, I have seen, I've experienced, I've seen it on uh, people living in a, in a terrible world in Nigeria with them. I mean, someone who grew up in Nigeria is not going to be um, happy with Nigeria once he leaves Nigeria, unlike me, who I grew up in, you know what I'm saying? So you can't really sit down and blame people for forgetting or trying to forget where they've come from because where they came from never really gave them anything good to remember. You know, to them, they're in the promised land and it's hard for them to look back to Nigeria and see opportunity, you know, because they were not, they didn't grow up around the circle of opportunity. You know, I go back to Nigeria because I grew up, um, I grew up, I, I, I was blessed with, uh growing up in a circle where i can see opportunity i can identify potential for growth potential for success not a lot of people have that um not a lot of people were blessed with that to grow up in that status of life you know so it, it it's tough for me to criticize somebody who's trying to forget that he came from nigeria because i have seen poverty you know i've seen poverty in nigeria i've seen people you know, live, not even live from hand to mouth because they don't really have anything to put in hand to them. I've seen people beg, you know, and I'm told I'm not, and it's not like America where somebody's begging you for money and you know that, okay, you can go get a job, you can go work at McDonald's, you can go do something and get money. In Nigeria, if somebody's begging you for money, he really does not have a way to have that money. You know, people work for months and don't get paid. So you cannot tell me that Nigerians are lazy and you know, it, it, it's a it's a it's a gray area when you start criticizing Nigerians who don't remember home. You know, now well, 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 I came I came I came from the trenches as well. Like I came from yeah, you know, but, you're but, but, because you but still, saw I, but, but still I didn't forget about home. You know, yeah, you can't forget about home, obviously. But I I I I haven't slept in Europe. Yeah, I slept I, I slept outside in Europe. You know what I mean, like. You know, you know, I know a lot of people that walked to Europe. You know, I know a lot of people that walked from Lagos to Lib- from uh, uh, Medjugorje to Libya. You know, a lot. Of, I know a lot of people that have done that. Nothing would make a human being do stuff like that, but you know, the desperation to succeed, especially where if you're where you're coming from, is not interested in your growth and development. You know, some people didn't make it. Some people did. Some people made it to Spain, and some people got deported back to Nigeria, and they're still trying to go back. Some went back, and they're good. So. What I'm trying to say is, let's try to not criticize Nigerians who forget home. Our government is our government. We know how our government is. You know, our government is not really interested in helping the masses. And we have come to live with that. You know, we have come to identify and say, okay, that's cool. Not everybody fend for themselves. So if a man is not remembering home, it's not because he doesn't love his home. It's not because he doesn't love his people. It's not because he doesn't love... Um, you know the culture you know he just all he remembers is suffering you know and he has uh imagine somebody who moved from ajegunle straight to miami florida why would he want to go back home you know why would he what do you think is going to remember about nigeria the only thing he's going to remember about nigeria is the gutters that he had to shower you know so that's a gray area you know um like we were blessed that we still see good in Nigeria because we were blessed to literally see some good in Nigeria, you know. But yeah, let's move forward to um, the height that you're talking about, you know, in boxing. Now I'm six eight. I'm actually six nine. I'm actually not six eight, but um, I'm actually taller than I say I am. Six nine. That means you yeah. are, you, you you are like Tyson Fury. You have the same height. Yeah, we're actually, I'm actually, we're about, about the same height. You know, we might be the same height. I'm actually six nine. Um, the reason I say I'm 6'8 is because at first it was really hard to find a guy that's going to want to fight me at 6'9. 
you know, so I had to shove myself a little bit and say, okay, you know what, I'm six eight. You know, I actually wanted to go six seven, but I was like, you know what, let's just stick with six eight. You know, um, there are a lot of guys that are my height in in the boxing division that you've not heard of. Don't get it twisted. Now I'm not the only one. Um, Honor Day is about six eight. Um, a guy that I spar every Saturday, um, Christian Christian Thun from Germany. He's six eight. Um, a lot of guys that have um, Filip Pergovic is about six eight six nine. Bakude Janalov is about six eight six nine. Um, what's his name? Ivan Dishko. He's that tall. He's about maybe six nine six ten. Um, Deontay Wilder is about six seven. Tyson is six nine. You know these guys are tall. So um, don't get it twisted when you think that oh it's just a giant high you're just gonna breeze through. Nah, in the amateurs yeah maybe cool but in the pros. Guys are big, guys are tall, and guys are moving. You know? Yeah, but not, not not everybody that is um that has your height can really really use it. You know how to use it. Yeah, I yeah, saw, I know how to use it because I like saw I, I said, saw one of I'm your a natural fight. athlete. I played basketball. I grew up playing basketball in Nigeria. Basketball took me from Nigeria to Miami, um, to to the United States. Um, I from basketball I moved to American football where I really really got the opportunity to develop my strength. Um, I really, really knew how to move my weight around. Basketball gives you some, gives you some level of athleticism, you know, and, and some level of fluidity. Um, football gives you a lot of strength, and you know, makes you just grind through and develop that um, old man type strength. You know, so those two, those two sports that I played transition made me transition well into boxing because now I'm tall, I'm, I have the endurance, I'm long. I can punch, I can move around, I'm swift, you know, so I can just breeze through people, you know, or just, you know, everybody comes like, there's a popular saying in amateurs, everybody comes out to fight in the first round. In the second round, everybody wants to take a break. So in the second round, when people are taking breaks, I'm throwing um, knockout punches, you know, so you're really not taking the break, you're just taking punches, you know, that's how I could really, really breeze through an amateur career. And actually the first portions of my um, professional career. That's why you see I have so many first round knockouts. It's not because the guys are not good, but it's because I just I'm just such a physical force, and I've had that background backyard training. You know, in 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 high level football, in high level basketball, I played in the ACC um, Division One bas uh, basketball. I played ACC Division One football. I went to the pros and I played at the Miami Dolphins training camp. So I've had high level sports background that I just transferred to boxing. And now I don't have to be athletic anymore. I just have to turn my athleticism into boxing and learn the skills of boxing, you know, and that's the better, that's the blessing that I have, you know, that's why you see that I'm moving up the rankings much faster than any regular boxer would, you know? So it's not really about the height. Yeah. The height is a blessing because it makes gives you the ability to compete. But at the end of the day, the work is one matters. You know, you still have, you still need those skills. You know, uh, you see a guy like Yusik, you know, who is just super skilled. Um, a guy who comes from the Lomachenko camp, you know, those guys are just real boxers, you know. Um, you want to be like guys like that. You want to watch a lot of Floyd Mayweather. You want to watch a lot of um, um, Errol Spence and uh, his, what's his name? What's the name of his uh, uh, his competitor? Um, the guy from Ter Nebraska. Uh, Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford, to me, he's one of the most skilled guys in boxing, too. You know, those are the guys that I watch and I really want to be like in terms of skill. Mm, that was very interesting, though. Um, mm. Now, looking at, of course, uh, the recent uh, news that came out about Deontay Wilder being in a phenomenal shape. He did an interview with uh, Sky Sports. Mm -hmm. um, how did I? How did I? How did I? How did I came about though? The interview with Sky Sports. Um, Actually, I and the I've known Deontay since 2017. Um, I think it was around November. I'm guessing um, he came to Miami. Um, I think to he came for the Luis Ortiz fight. Luis Ortiz fought some guy. He knocked the guy out. Um, Luis Ortiz. I think that's where Luis Ortiz called out Deontay Wilder. And the next fight was a Wilder fight. So I met him briefly. You know, hey, what's up? How you doing, man? Rafael, cool. Nice to meet you. You know, nothing really of sorts. But the real connection is um, Deontay Wilder and I, we have the same strength and conditioning coaching team. We, we work on the same strength and conditioning team. Uh, so the things that you, he does to, for you to think that he's athletic, I do the same things. 
you know. Um, um, so with this lockdown, I think he came down to Miami. Usually he does his work in Alabama and Atlanta and all those places, but he came down to Miami just to be away from the crowd. And, you know, we do the same um, strength and conditioning work. Um, so that's how we met. Um, we actually, on the day we actually met, we went to the, we have the same chiropractor also. Um, so I went for the uh, chiropractor, to the chiropractor to get adjusted. And we just talked, you know, have a, had a long conversation, you know. He's trying to come to Nigeria, actually. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, we, um, we have plans <laughs> the, that works to visit the Nigeria. Guy, the, the, guys are, the guys are Nigerian, right? You know, yeah, he, like... he, has, he loves Nigeria. I don't know why. But he just he's well, all about it. Well, well, he's, he's Nigerian. He has thirty two percent Nigerian name. So why oh, why, really? why not? Yes, he has. Wow. Yeah. Go check he, go go check out his DNA result. Oh yeah, you know? yeah, that, yeah. That, 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 that is why people people keep saying now. Oh, BBC, you don't love Deontay Wilder now. Be I say well, yeah, nah, 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 no, I'll, I'll tell you firsthand. Deontay Wilder loves Nigeria, and I mean. He, and if you hear, if he hears about anything in Nigeria, he's like he's all ears, you know. He's talking to me about how he's going to visit Lagos, how he's going to go to Abuja. He was telling me that he was going to go to somewhere in like uh, he was going to go to I think Benue State. I was like, bro, chill. You need to you need to let's 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 start with Lagos and Abuja first, you know. Then later we can start taking the the Ante Water, the Ante Water is 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 Asoro, you know what I mean? Yeah. Asoro the Asoro the warrior, the guy that defended. You know the Bini Wars against the British invasion in yeah yeah uh, exactly 18, not, 1897. The thing about the thing about Wilder is that he does he's not like when I go to Nigeria I'm in Lagos usually I go to Bini to see my dad you know I'm around those you know I'm around the circles that I've been before but he is trying to go to the villages you know he's trying to go to like you know Abonima you know all those kind of I mean why, why, village, why, 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 why does he want to go to the villages like no yeah, I mean, I mean okay, you man. should go uh, I, told, the, I told the man like is, yo is, chill man let's, is, let's, is, let's, is, baby, let's take baby steps first let's show it, you around Lagos first you know let's take you to Abuja you know meet some politicians you know shake hands it, it, it means it means a story I heard is true like due to water like might even try to obtain a chief tenancy title you know what I mean I, mean, I heard like, about it I heard about it but I don't know how just as in Nigeria, you know, <laughs> not how that works. <laughs> I mean, he can do it now. Uh, the guy, the guy again. Just as in Nigeria, just have to identify where you're from, man. Yeah, that is true. That is Nigeria true. Nigeria is our country. You know how things work. Over so here. he's a he's a monster ship now. Oh yeah, I mean amazing shape. Um, I mean, I so know you, what I do. I know what he does, and it's. I mean, every I, you know, I, I made a comment the other day. I mean, we're working out, right? I was like, yo, I understand why why he's so mad. In press conferences, because there's no way in hell you can do stuff like this and not want to put it on somebody. It's like putting your body through hell, and you know, you see a man. Do you see the reason why you're putting your body through that hell? You just want to knock him out in the first round. You know, I can really understand now. I could after going through the workouts, and now I can really understand why the man is so angry at at at, uh, at, uh, at press conference, and he's so angry at his opponents. You know, I understand why he takes people out so quickly too, you know. But he's a good guy, man. Amazing dude. Um, you know, we have the same coach, we have the same chiropractor. Um, you know, he's a he's a good guy, man. He's a good dude. I thought uh uh Johnson, Glenn Johnson is your coach. Yeah, yeah, the Road Warrior. Is it the one training Deontay Water now? No, 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 no. Deontay okay. Water has his own training team. I think he works with JDs and Mark Breland. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's a great coach too. You know, he's like I think he's a shoot. He's one of the best amateur boxers that the world has ever seen. You know, so has, you guys have an amazing coaching staff. Amazing coaching staff. So you guys have the the same strength and conditioning coach, I guess. Yeah, yeah. We just have the same strength and conditioning coach, Joey Scott of True Fear Athletics. Well, how do you see the trilogy played out? <laughs> I know you're in, you're you're on the side of the Nigerian guy, don't you order? I mean, um, I, I can't, I'm not, I, I know what I know. I know what's going to happen. I, I know my predictions, but I can't give you my predictions. Uh, uh. I think, I think Tyson Fury is an amazing boxer. I mean, I've never seen a boxer that has the confidence that he has, you know, the Jiu-Jitsu King, man. I mean, if he's coming through, everybody's coming with him, you know, to me, I just love him. I love his energy, dude. I mean, that, he's one boxer that I love. I mean, I don't. Aside from maybe, I'm, I'm talking about personalities wise. Personality wise, um, Muhammad Ali, Floyd Mayweather, 
um, the the what's his name? The guy from England who used to do all the crazy stuff back in the day. Uh, what's his name again? Is it uh, an uh, 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 Nas? No, not Nas. Nazim, Nas Prince Nazim, Nazim, you know? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think he's in that Nazim. category of entertainers, you know? Also, um, Tyson Fury is a, uh, I mean, that man, the man has, you can tell that he's been fighting for a long time and he's also a student of the game. Now, uh, people who don't know boxing will say, oh, you know, he's not, he has no power, he has no this. But if you really, really study him, he's a very fundamental boxer, just like every single one of them. You know, he's just... He's been through the game for so long and, you know, he's putting his own time and his own efforts into it. And uh, he's, a, he's a supreme boxer. You know, he's a supreme boxer now. Is he a knockout artist? Nah. Um, if that fight goes the distance, I don't think that fight goes the distance. The, the, wild, the water fuel fight, I don't think goes the distance. Um, if... I don't think it goes the distance. You can well, decide who can win the fight. Well, I mean, um, the second for the rematch, I supported uh, Tyson Fury to win uh, because of, uh, you know, Deontay Wilder, you know, pride and all the stuff that he was saying. And but after after my re latest research, you know, and the uh, findings. Um, him being Nigerian, I mean, I have to go. I can't, I'm not going against a Nigerian for it at all. Like, I yeah. mean, he's, he has Nigerian blood in him. Forget about the fact that his, his, his ancestors were taken from Africa 400 years ago. Still, yeah. as long as he ha as long as long as that 32 percent is in him, uh, for me, he's Nigerian. I mean, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not so I'm supporting the other to be the Tessie Fury. You um, know? but I, I don't, I don't know if he if he wins. Um. But I, I'm supporting him to be to be this very. I mean, the only reason I would support Deontay Wilder is because we're in the same circle, you know. Um, I I I supported Deontay Wilder for the first and the second fight. Um, I I think he's going to be very. I don't. I think he's going to be very successful in the third fight. Um, I think I don't think the fight will go the distance. That I can tell you for sure. Um, somebody will get knocked out. Deontay Wilder will. I, I'm being quiet, you know. But um, <laughs> I, I, think, I don't think the fighter will fight go the distance. You feel, if you feel, go, you feel, 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 I don't think it'll go the distance. I really, I don't see how it happens based on what I know personally. I don't see how it happens. Um, but um, I have, I mean, I have, I have ultimate respect for, for, for Tyson Fury, man. I have ultimate respect for Tyson Fury. And I don't, I'm not in the Tyson Fury camp. I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm not in the Deontay Wilder camp either. So I only know the man is in shape. And yeah, man. Judge based on being in shape, Deontay Water will be very successful in that next fight. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I, I mean, I hope, I hope, I hope. I just hope, man. So now, looking at the every division, you know, yeah. have you have you had the opportunity to meet uh, Anthony Joshua? By the way, no, or, actually, I never or, have. Or um, if you're, if you're Jack Bar. Actually, I've never had, I've never met Anthony Joshua. I I I and if they were cool, um, we, we I have his number. We text sometimes. I talk to also I talk to if Apochi. Yeah, he, Apochi, he, Apochi. You guys may or may not know him, but he's a cruiserweight division. He's doing he's a cruiserweight boxer here in, in America. He's actually doing very well. I follow his career a lot. I don't know when his next fight is, but he's very very good. How about he, uh, our Nigerian brother uh, Joe Joyce as well? Joe Joyce, I um I don't I, I don't really know. I never knew it was Nigerian actually. Joe Joyce. Well, and Joe Joe Joe's Joe Joe's mom is from Owerri. Oh really? Uh, yeah, so it's Nigerian. Ah, we're doing big things, man. His name is his name is uh Joe Ob. Joyce. What? Joe Ob Joyce. Joe Ob. Just Ob. No, nothing yeah. wrong with Ob. Hmm. Well, not jo not, 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 not jo uh, Joseph Obi now. Joseph Obi. Okay, Obi. Okay, Joseph man. Obi. What's up, man? I didn't know that. I mean, I think Joe Joyce is a good fighter. Actually, I have him winning against uh, the other do, kid. Dubois, Dubois. 
the why I think he's going to win. I think the experience is just too. I think just the experience is too much for Daniel Dubois. Um, I, I Joe Joyce is a is a combination puncher and he does not stop punching. You know, he he might be a little awkward, you know, in terms of speed, but you can be best rest assured that a punch is going to be coming every second. You know, I don't think Dubois can handle that. I don't think Dubois might he's six four, he's probably two thirty two, whatever. He looks good on camera, but when you step in the ring, things are different. Um, I think Joe Joyce wins that fight based on experience alone and uh, the style he brings to 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 a fight. You know, he's Pe- a constant pe- people are, people are actually cutting him out, cutting him out, cutting him out, though. Are saying that um, no, people are uh, just fans. In bo- people in boxing, nobody in boxing. Joe Joyce wasn't he, an Oli- wasn't he an Olympic silver medalist? Yeah, yeah. So why are you counting him out? I mean, no, no, I'm not counting him out, but I'm supporting him to be. Uh, Joe born. Joyce was an Olympic silver medalist. He was in the World Series of Boxing. He's had Joe Joyce. I mean, you might not like his style, but his style has been winning fights. You know, Joe like, Joyce. Born, Joe Joyce is the most like decorated. Um, boxer amateur boxer from the uk like he he has got majority of the me, i mean more medals than anthony joshua yeah you know so like, the guy the guy's not a joke people just look at him and think. actually i was talking about him the other day today actually because uh my boy christian thune told me that he fought joe joyce in some little shank um some area in london and the place was packed you know, I mean, don't disrespect whoever is disrespecting Joe Joyce does not know boxing. You know, the, 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 the guy go the guy go unleash on himself. Yeah, like that's why for me with Uncle Roger, he said majority of people don't know shit about boxing. You know, it's just what it is. And that they're not supposed to know things about boxing because they're fans. You know, their job is to literally follow the game and support. You know, but whoever is saying Joe Joyce is gonna win, they literally know nothing about boxing. They've never been in the ring. You know, the guy that he's going to be fighting is a one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three guy. Drew Joyce is a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, one, two, three, four, five, you know. Don't disrespect Drew Joyce like that, man. I mean, I mean l- I look like at, looking <laughs> at the division right now, huh? Sorry to interrupt. Continue, brother. Mm-hmm. No, no, I'm just saying, like, personally, I don't, his style is not appealing to me, but I know what guys like that in the ring, how it feels fighting against a guy like that in the ring is. You know, a guy who's going, throwing six-punch combinations and who's just coming forward and just throwing. You know, those guys are not easy to deal with. And I I personally think that Joe Joyce knocks Dubois out in this fifth round. Hmm. Well, that's interesting, though. But I believe that I believe that if, if Dubois does not hold Joe Joyce in the, in, the early, in the early rounds, it will be... It, no, Joe Dubois Joyce has take- no, no chance of hurting Joe Joyce. Like, I don't see how that happens. His right hand is not heavy enough to hurt Joe Joyce. Um, now, he looks heavy against people like, you know, regular people, but nah, not Joe Joyce, man. Don't disrespect Joe Joyce like that. Whoever is doing that is just, 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 just there's no boxing. Now, looking at the Everett division, we have a lot of Nigerians in it right now. Upcoming, mm-hmm. we have you, the you know, the, the, the hurricane, you know what I mean? So... The guy was going to <laughs> the guy who go put us on that for the every division self. You did it. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, what did it? Um, I Jack but did it. In fact, I, I haven't heard it. Apochi, he, he, uh, he said he said himself after he conquered the Christopher division, he might go up. He will go up. And then you have Joshua, and then you have Joe Joyce, and mm-hmm. then uh, who else again? There are a lot of. I mean, I heard there's one guy as well, eBay. Well, we like heard eBay. about a guy today. Um, his name is Peter Cadero from Germany. Yeah, yeah, I know the guy. I know, I know Peter Cadero. Uh, I know Peter Cadero. Yeah, yeah, I heard. I heard he's good. I've never, I never heard of seen of seen him before. But Peter, Peter, Ca- Peter, Ca- Peter Cadero beat. Uh, he beat uh, the the boy in the in the amateurs in Croatia. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, he beat him. You know, it be the Dubois, and then you look at Dubois, you look at Peter Carey, you say, "Oh, but that Carey is a he's a very he's a very, very very skillful guy." You know, I watched his last fight. I even covered it. You know, I watched his last fight. It was very nice. It's very nice. And uh, yeah, like looking at the division, it's very packed. You know, you even have this Chinese guy. You know, uh, yeah. Zhang Jilei, Zhang Jilei, Zhang yeah. Jilei uh, who just signed uh, yeah. a, promotional, a promotional deal with uh, yeah. a ma- Matro. Like, 
how do you feel looking at the division like i mean back five years ago let's say five years ago the division was not packed like this uh, people were not excited about it what do you think changed i say I joshua brought it back though the but the guys that you see today the, the truth is this the guys that you're seeing today they've always been there they were just coming up you just didn't know them you know like like you see me today you're hearing of me today but only people like you knew me three years ago right the, the boxing insiders knew who i was the people in the gym they knew who i was the people in boxing circles they knew who i was four years ago you know it's just now our time to come out you know the champ the champions of back in the day they knew who we were back then because we were training with them and sparring with them back in the day but it was just their time it just happens that it's our time right now for media because their time is the Deontay Wilder, the Anthony Joshua, the Tyson Fury time. You know, they're slowly phasing away for the new guys to come up. You know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, one thing I have to listen, I always say Joshua broke back the division, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Joshua was, has been big for, I mean, if Joshua is not just the heavyweight division, Joshua has been big for boxing in itself. You know, um, I mean, they say um, the heavyweight division, go, the boxing goes as the heavyweight division goes. And I think Joshua has been himself, his, his, uh, his, uh, his personality himself, the way he carries himself, the way he's marketed himself, the way he's pushed and promoted himself, um, his fight, his style, you know. I think it's, it's helped boxing a lot, you know, uh, especially the heavyweight division, because now um, boxing is pleasing and pleasant to watch you know the guys are you see a guy like uh, Deontay with his physique and the way he talks you know the way he carries himself you know you want to watch him fight you see a guy like me you know my physique my background you know the way I talk you want to watch you want to see what can this guy really do you see a guy like Joshua with you know his personality or you see Fury with his height you know his style his movement you want to watch those guys fight you know, and Joshua to me has, and Matrim and Eddie Hearn and his people, um, they've done a, they've, they've laid out a template, you know, for us, for the, for the next generation to move the sport forward. And uh, that's, that's the goal here. You know, I think he's done a good job of moving the heavyweight division in a positive limelight. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to see where the future holds for the sport and for the division. Yeah, like, I'm just checking out, um, um, your your profile here on both rec you have two fights scheduled you know what i mean so mm -hmm. you you fight in I don't know, november and january right yep that means you are moving in a fast pace yeah and this is this what i like this is what i like because you see before you know it now 2021 you 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 you'll be nine fights in before you know 10 11 12 13 and your name is even now you are like just seven fights in and your name is already in the mainstream that just shows that if you continue this part brother i don't like you nah <laughs> nah nah if you, to, for me to even get uh such a which you say fair i would i would need to wait another, another two years again oh no, you know I, I remember like a year ago i told you that i was going to do an interview with you and here we are today you know yeah, yeah. Like, you're not my guy, you know. You know, say you can always you have my number. You can always text me. You know, you can always schedule something. Um, it's hard, you know. It's hard these days because I have media. I mean, this is the part of boxing that is could be fun but could be detrimental because now you're not just boxing. Now you're scheduling media sessions. You're scheduling interviews. You know, you're doing a lot of promotional things. You're doing a lot of your your, your, your training is now packed with people watching, you know, and not just people watching, but with cameras. You know, you have to literally have a, a camp coordinator to tell people to leave or, you know, to schedule a session at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. where people are, you know, OK, they're not awake at this time. They can't come, you know. So it's we're getting to the level right back in the day. It was just me and Glenn and maybe one of, of the other fighters in the gym training. But now, like, at least there are 10 people there when we're training, you know, and other boxers always want to also be there just to learn and to see, you know, whatever template that we set for ourselves to be successful. Um, but, yeah, man, you know, um, the goal was to have more fights by now. But, you know, the COVID pandemic and the lockdown, um, 
wasn't going to let us do that. But, you know, um, we have, we're scheduled to fight in November, November 7th in Bonita Springs. Uh, it's a city here in uh, Florida, two hours from Miami. And uh, we're also scheduled for January 23 here in Miami. Um, the, 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 we hope that crowds are going to be allowed to gather. You know, we hope that by then maybe Trump will be gone because people are just tired of the nonsense that's going on. And, you know, the country can kind of start afresh. You know, we can start, you know, enjoying life as we're supposed to, you know. And, uh, you know, um, we, we have big things scheduled. We have, um, I, I, my goal is to fight at least eight fights next year. And that's why I have that December timeline for a world title fight. Um, I want to be challenging for a world title by the end of 2021. And hopefully 2022, we can have a belt. We can challenge whoever has the belt at that time. And, you know, make our country proud. Well, if Joshua Hastie has the belt, then that's going to be a huge fight, you know, in Nigeria or somewhere else. Um, I mean, unfortunately, you know, we're in the fight business. If he, has to, if he still has the belt at that time, he's going to have to defend the belt. Yeah, you know, man. Knocking the door. And- and Joshua is a guy that that doesn't really back back down and in, in defending bills. And nah, I mean he's not supposed to back down. I mean he's a fighter. He's a uh, but 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 you know some fighters they play some 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 kind of politics and you know when they hold when they have the belts they want to like I don't know like maximize it you know like I don't know it's just like a little bit yeah it's it, not the it, fighter you, know, you, you, you see fighter you, you see you, you see boxing right now you see where it is right now boxing yeah. is not supposed to be in this place because. People like you know. I it's, I I'm, I still I still sometimes sit down and just think about things, especially when I was so hyped for the Joshua, you know, water fight. You know, these team was going the team both teams were going back and forth. Water was saying all sorts of crap about Joshua. You know, and hearing of course firing back. You know, it was just like crazy. And the UFC yeah. don't have that. People are more, people are like. A lot of people that I know, although I'm not into you, I'm not a big UFC, UFC fan like that. I don't really know much about UFC. I just started following it not long ago because of our brothers, the uh, Desoya and the Camarillos, man. So I'm like studying, you know, the sport just to know. You know, it's not like it's boxing that I I grew up knowing and following and all the stuff. So it's different. So I have to like study the sport and see how, how, how it is. I'm, I'm not just like, I'm not a super fan of UFC, but because we have our Nigerian brothers there. Yeah, we Sad, is Sad, killing it. Um, Sadiq. Is killing it. There's actually we have a lot Sadiq. of coming up, man. Sa- 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 Sadiq, is, is, his name is Sadiq, Uma Sadiq. Yes. I think it's, so it's coming up oh. as well. So I just like follow those guys because of the sport, but I will see how it goes. So now, um, are you happy happy with the state of box right now the world i mean the the state is right now you know you know i don't know like too many wars you know being fought by promoters and all that i and, mean it, it, but, it's, it is what it is you know it's just it's just the way it is you know fighters want to fight i can tell you i can tell you a hundred percent if it was left to the fighters wilder and joshua would have fought two years ago but, you know, Floyd Mayweather has been a great person for boxing, but he's also been a, you know, he's also showed us how to make money in boxing, you know. And if you follow his template, you're going to wait for fights to mature, you know, for the money to be right. Now, the, the problem is that if you wait for the fight to mature, one of the fighters might get knocked out, might get at lose. You know, we saw that happen with Joshua uh, and Ruiz knocked him, not knocked him out, but beat, beat him. And he was on the verge of never having those belts again. And that, and gladly he got his belts back. Um, if we want to see a Wada Joshua fight again, Wada has to win his belts back. And we will see the biggest fight in boxing. Um, that's just the, the, that's the risk you take, you know, if you don't make those fights or if you're waiting for the pot to get bigger. And it's just a part of the sport, you know. Like the White yeah. case where you waited for like one thousand days to get it, <laughs> almost close to getting it, and then <laughs> Povetkin just like came in and like did what he did to him. Exactly. I mean, you know, so, like Dylan White, you know. White um, versus uh, who's in the, um, Deontay Wilder. If Deontay, if Deontay Dylan White, Dylan White, Deontay Wilder is not going to go to England to fight Dylan White. 
that's not gonna happen. Um, Dylan White comes to America. Nobody knows who the hell Dylan White is. We're gonna think it's just another Dominic Brazil, you know. So the money is not really there, even though it's a mandatory. The money's not there, you know. And it's just uh, it's just an unnecessary risk for Wilder. I mean, I, I believe Wilder will be Dion, Dion White. That is my personal belief. I don't, I don't, I'm not in their camp. But to me, Dion White is also a skill fighter. And I think um, if somehow Dion White beats Wilder, that messes up the money for Wilder Joshua. So Wilder Joshua is out of the way, you know? So it's easy to blame promoters and all, but if you're in boxing, you really understand why things are not working the way the fans want it to work. Yeah, yeah I'm, I mean, I I started to do for the white um, Deontay Wilder fight. Who's gonna do that in England? Uh, they'll do that, but how much is pay per view over there? You know, in America, we know the uh, Deontay Wilder, but we don't know the other white. I mean, people in the boxing know the other white, but. People on the streets of Vegas, they don't know who he is. He's just another regular guy from England. Now, if it's Joshua coming to the MGM Grand to fight Wilder, yeah, now we're talking. You know, but yeah, you know, it's there. There are many, there are many, um, there are many things in boxing, you know, that we have to accomplish. Now, um, Tyson Fury wasn't signed with anybody, so he could really make that. I mean, he was signed with somebody, but you know, Tyson Fury did not have the. Uh, commitment, you know, Tazri is a warrior, he's a dog, you know, so he stepped in and gave us two big fights already, you know, he's about to give us another one, and he, he took a gamble on himself, and he had, now he has the belt, you know, so people like Tyson Fury, that's why I respect him so much, you know, because they don't care about winning, they don't care about losing, you know, they put themselves in positions to be successful, and they go for it, and they're successful, you know, uh, Wilder accepted the fight, Tensure accepted the fight, and they gave it to us. You know, they made, hopefully, they made a lot of money from it and then kind of compensated them for whatever service they gave us. And, you know, that's how boxing should be. But boxing is not that way anymore. It's more, it's now a money making opportunity. Yeah, well, it's what it is. What can I say about it? Is, that? It is what it is. The, politi the, poli the, the politics side of it, it just it turns everyone off. But yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's a sweet spot. So yeah. tonight, our brother um, Afia Jabba will be going against Jonathan Rice. Um, do you know Jonathan Rice? No, I never heard of him actually. Jonathan Rice. Yeah, Jonathan Rice. Yeah, Jonathan Rice. What is his record? Uh, thirteen wins. He has thirteen wins on his record. Five losses. He uh, lost twice to. He lost twice. What is Makina Magdumov, you know, and one. Oh, Mahmoud, Mahmoud, yeah, um, Mahmoud, Russia world champion. Yeah, from Russia. That guy's that guy's a danger. Huh? Yeah, I sparred him actually. I sparred him before his last fight in Saudi. Mom, as it's uh, what the the, no, no, the guy no, with the beard. No, not the one, not the one I fought in Saudi. Oh, not the one I fought in Saudi. Okay. No, the Mahmoud Mahmoudov is like he's he has about um he has he's ten and oh the guy in his last opponent. Was Samuel Peter, our Nigerian uh, okay, brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> our, our Nigerian yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Our grandfather said, our grandfather said, he does years old. Uh, wow. So I uh, said, yeah, but, uh, how many years before me? <laughs> Man is still in shape, though. I mean, Samuel Peter is still in shape. Samuel Peter is a legend. Um, but, you know, I, I, hate le I hate when legends, you know, pull like become Johnny Man. You know, I just I just don't like it. I just don't like it. I mean, we look at Enria Kiwari for example. The last time he fought was 2008. Now I heard that uh, recently a news came out uh, someone wrote me on Inst uh, Instagram and informed me that Enria Kiwari is currently hospitalized uh, and diagnosed with uh, lung cancer. So we wish him nothing uh, but the best and we pray for him. Cause it's not it's not easy, and, and the guys and the guy said that um, he wants to sell his property in Lagos, you know, really? and yeah, like squarely in the UK, you know, I just, I, boxing is I like you might met his coach from uh, from Nigeria. When last time I was there, I forgot his name. I think his name is Coach TNT. He's uh, he trains at Roe Park. And we are Wade. Yeah, Kimwade's coach. Kimwade's coach in uh, in Nigeria. Before, I think before he went. 
when uh, what's his name? TNT is not coach always. Uh, I think it's coach TNT. Short guy, man, funny dude. You know, he told me that back in the day he used to hold pads for Henry Aki one day. So there's no power I could show him that, you know, that would shake him. I'm like, come on, man, bro, I'm a champ. You know, funny dude, man. Yeah. So, so you of course um. Um, wanted to represent Nigeria in the Olympic, right? You really want to go there? <laughs> <laughs> well, we are we are we are we are, we are Nigerian. We must yeah, talk about we, the. We, uh, we drop that matter uh, be, 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 because the other guy, the other, another guy wrote me as well, who complained saying that he wasn't treated treated fairly, and um, I I talked about I, I talked about the issue and all that. I'm not. I'm still. I don't know how country like Ghana, you know, with small passers, free just the they they more organized in terms of their boxing matter compared to Nigeria. It just the first me small. But I just want to see the change. That's why I was supposed to go with Coach Nigeria with uh Tajak Bay and my other guys. We wanted wanted to go there and invest and do some investigation and then do a documentary. And just because I talked to the secretary of Nigerian boxing, you know, he was supposed to um, do an interview with me, like give an interview, but I don't know what happened. I called the guy, you know, you know, I say, you know, get, you know, get time now, you go do one. That's why, that's why I see an issue. <laughs> so I, I'm just disappointed. How do you think you and you and Nigerian like me? How do you think we can fix that? I think uh, is 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 is, 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 he, is he unf- is he unfeasible or what? But Ghana 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 are doing it. Ghana boxing is well organized. This is what I'll tell. This is what I'll beg the youth of Nigeria. I'm not going to say and criticize anybody. I'm not going to say anything. Um, I think uh, the coach, the Nigerian boxing coach, the head coach, uh, and the ladies coaches. I think they are a one first class people. I have nothing but respect for the coaches in Nigeria. They're like, I mean, their knowledge of boxing, their service to the nation is something that I don't know if I could give again. You know, the, the way they they put their own efforts and their money and their time in service to the nation is, I don't, I didn't believe that there are people in Nigeria that love Nigeria the way they love Nigeria. And that's the coaches. And uh, I will not say anything, but I'll just tell my fellow youths that the same energy you are putting into voting for Big Brother Nigeria, please use that energy and your time and your resources to vote for better leaders, you know. That's so, all. That's so. you know, that good, that good, good, ad- good advice. Good advice. Like so uh, for, uh, for, because things are bad, and Nigeria has put us in a position where it, it's now like every man for himself. Every man has been fending for himself. That we really don't understand how bad things are. Things are bad, and. Uh, Things are bad. And even Nigeria, Nigeria cannot see it because, like I said, Nigerians have been left to fend for themselves. For themselves. You have to buy fuel. You have to build, get your own generator. You have to build your own borehole. You have to build your own house. You have to imagine, imagine a big city like Nigeria. There's no sewage system. You have to build your own soak away. You, ha- you know, it's, you, I mean, true. You have, when Nigeria has come to the level where we have to literally contribute money to, build your own roads, you know, that things are bad. And because that everybody has been in an isolation mode for so long, we literally don't know how bad things are because everybody is now focused on taking care of their own family. It's a, it's a all man for himself world. But if you venture yourself out of your own um, bubble and try to step into making things happen for like I, like I did on the national stage, you will realize that our youth, we really have to do something. We have to go out and even, I don't know what it is that we have to do, but we need to change the direction of our country, you know, because things are bad and we, it, it's in us and it's in us only to change it. That's all I got to say. Thanks, brother, man. I Listen, I can't thank you enough because I mean, it took me almost two years or two years plus or so <laughs> to get to get an interview. Now that we finally we finally have it here, I guess a lot of people are gonna love it and more to come in the future. 
for sure. Yeah, because um, man, because I, I really, I really hope to, I really want to see you in a spotlight. You know, I want to see, I, I want to see every Nigerian, you know, athlete doing well, supporting each other, you know, being there for each other. When it's time to fight, okay, we'll feel talk the track, say, well, I'll beat you, I'll beat you. After yeah. fight, check us, Nigerians, you know, move ahead. You know I mean, yeah. that's what it be. They, they, they don't yeah, have to be, you know, an annual animosity. That's why when I hear some statements from some of our Nigerian brothers, you know, who are at least, you know, about Nigeria, about some other fathers, I mean, for me, you never like see like a British athlete can only talk smack to another British athlete when it is time to fight or when they are getting when when they are when they are supposed when the public expected to fight but after that they just like chickens you know they have their fans yeah but i mean there's one thing that the regular fans don't understand and we don't i don't really ex we boxers don't expect them to understand our business is literally fighting you know we literally fight for money so the beef that our fans like rafael fans have towards Anthony Joshua fans or the beef that Anthony Joshua fans have towards Rafael fans, we, I and Joshua, I and Wilder, we don't have that beef because we live for us to make money. We literally, we need each other. You know what I'm saying? We need, I need them to, to, to hone their skills as much as they need me to hone their skills. And when we get into the ring to fight, there's really no animosity. You know, I, I understand that it makes, it makes the people feel good, you know, that, oh, yeah, Rafael's going to knock him out, you know, Joshua's going to punish him, you know. Yeah, we get it, you know. That's the beautiful part of boxing. But, you know, when it comes to fighters themselves, we don't hate each other, man, you know. We want to see them go home to their families. as, And we also, we are skilled boxers. We're not killers. We're not, you know, we're not, I'm not there to take your life away from you and your family. You know, there's a reason we have fighters' wives and children sit ringside. You know, my goal is not to kill your daddy in front of you. You know what I'm saying? So, um, like I said, I don't expect fans to understand that. I need them to be passionate about what they do. Um, I appreciate all the hate mail. And I appreciate all the people that go into my DM to curse me out. I really like it. I Who really people's because, people have been cursing you out. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love it, man. <laughs> I, well, I, don't know about, I don't know about that, man. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I love it because I now I know that at least, you know, you're following I love it. I personally made a pack where, like, made a pack where, and then suppose no, no, no. Well, you know, as long as you tune in to watch my fights, and uh, I think we'll be good. You know, uh, I mean, one thing I know is that you're not going to see me on the street and talk to me. You know, you're not going <laughs> to bring the same energy to me if you see me in person. <laughs> so, the re <laughs> some, some people, some people, some people, I love uh, setting fighters too much. Yeah, like, I mean, but a that's the, as a fighter, I, I understand that, and I actually want that. You know, I need you to either hate me or love me or talk smack to me because when you do stuff like that, I go back and watch myself and say, oh, you know what? Maybe I should correct this. I should correct it. I should get better at this, you know? So we literally need the crowd to do that. I need people to go into my DMs and curse me out and tell me I ain't shit. I ain't this, you know? Um, I got to get better. I got to move my head out of the way or my legs, are sh my skills are not there, you know, because that puts me on my toes, you know? So, I mean, but I just need the fans to know that boxers don't hate each other, you know. We, I want you to go home back to your family. You know, I might hit you. I might knock you out, but I don't, I'm not trying to kill you. You know, I know you're going to wake up, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. Anyway, I'm really, really glad that you joined BBC. Uh, I mean, the people are going to be definitely, people who are watching right now are definitely uh, happy to, to see this happening. And uh, what I would say to you is that keep up the good work. Not let any of these jaga 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 all this kind of thing gonna destroy your stuff. Keep focusing. <laughs> keep knocking people out. And once the thing happens, in fact, if if if, if those not so one thing, self, it does say it does not be this uh, this pandemic, self. But may I have said may I have may I enter that 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 zanga? You know, you man. January when, when you're fight. fighting here in Miami. Um, it's going to be on YouTube Live. It's going to be on uh, Facebook Live. It's going to be on um, Twitter Live. Hopefully, I can get it on Instagram Live so all the Nigerian fighters, all the Nigerian boxing um, enthusiasts can literally watch. You know, well, well, I, well I, can, I can help you stream it, though, if you want. Oh, yeah. You know, we can, I can definitely actually send you the link or you can stream it from the, the promotions link, you know. 
Um, it's oh. going to be, I think it's a, a show that's going to be held by Road Warrior Promotions here in Miami, Florida. Um, it's going to be a packed crowd. We hope, you know, we hope the goal, is, the hope is that uh, um, crowds are going to be allowed to gather. So if crowds are allowed to gather, you know, it's going to be an amazing, amazing event. So, and, so cur currently you are still uh, a free agent, right? Yeah, I'm a free agent. Um, I'm most likely to be a free agent for a long time. So, I mean, you control your own destiny then. That's the goal, you know. I mean, uh, like I said, I would love to. I would love to. I mean, it depends, you know. Me, 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 like see you for matrimony, but I understand. Oh, yeah, I mean, they... like I said, boxing is boxing, you know. Regardless of where, what platform you're fighting, you're still fighting, and you're still fighting the best. You yeah, know, because I, I, I believe you go, you go have some, you go have some extra juice around. I know, I don't see anybody. Yeah, with, with, yeah. the better piece of fighting on my room is you're fighting on on the main, on a different platform and mainstream television. You know, apart, apart from apart from Joshua, I don't see any threat to or there for that matter. I don't see any threat either. I don't. I actually, personally, I don't think anybody in boxing right now is a threat to me. Um, I don't see any anybody that's ten and no under from ten and no down in boxing that's a threat to me. Um, by the time I'm ready for a heavyweight, I mean, by March of next year, I don't see any boxer in the world that is going to be a threat. So you will know? you fight in Nigeria as well someday? Um, that's the plan, <laughs> you know. Um, hopefully we can find an opponent at that time when the time is right, when the money is right. Um, I, I wish that would happen, you know. That would be a great, you know, that would be great for the continent itself. Yeah, you're 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 you're, 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 you're number you're number three man in Nigeria right now, as we speak. They're in the yeah, rankings. Man, I know I'm number one. You know, you just don't know yet. Same way you didn't I, know me I, three years ago. I, I mean, I mean in the rankings, in the rankings. Now, what do I see? Now, 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 so rank it up. Hey man, like I'm saying, by the time by the time it's all said and done, you're gonna the same way you didn't know me three years ago or last year. It's the same way they don't know I'm the number one man in the world right now. No, no, I know, I knew, I knew, I knew last year. Uh, I mean, no, two years ago, last two years. No, you knew me, but people didn't know me. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, of course. This boy came out from nowhere and he's like, "Wait, what?" You know, yeah, but those yeah, who yeah. knew me, they know me well. Yeah, and yeah, that's true. That's true. In, in in by May of 2021, I will be in the top 10 in the world. Then the people will really, really know that okay, this guy is for real. You know, you, this you, is our you, guy. You didn't knock doors down anyhow. Hey, man. I, 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 I beg, may you, may you use pigeon. May I address pigeon? May I address our, our people for pigeon small before we move? What do you want my talk? What do you want my flu there? I don't know, man. I don't know. I address, I address it. I give, give the advice. I like, give the advice. Say, let them know. Me, boy. Tell me this. Tell me this. Tell me this. Subscribe now. I'm going to subscribe to our guy, Ubey De Raymond. You know, now our brother. Boxing Block Center. I think my opinion is the biggest. I mean, my opinion and the opinion of uh, 50 million Nigerians. I'm the biggest boxing voice, and I am super glad and super excited and super. I appreciate the opportunity we just give me to uh, speak on this platform. You know, um, those winners shall be me. You know, when I will know me well. Those winners shall be me when I know me. Those where they insult me, where they cost me for my Instagram, when I continue. Those will love me. Thank you. You know, all at the end of the day. Your 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 na Lagos PG, eh? <laughs> and then they all join, you know, all now. Uh, uh, Lagos, nah, you know, say PG, 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 PG come from Bini and Data. You know what I mean? Yeah, now we are good school now. What you talk? Uh, but but I Lagos for now for now now you, now you I feel great now. Lagos, but now I, I, they want me for Lagos, but now we are grown. Uh, I know, I know, but I but, but I that's Lagos boy. <laughs> hey, my pigeon, never no wrong. You no know, say um worry and beneath pigeon. They are involvement pigeon. Everything they evolve every time. You know, I know, so, I know, I know. So your pigeon, but I just your pigeon was young for for two thousand and five. Nobody say pigeon they young in two thousand twenty twenty. Hey, not so, not so, not so. You, know, you said you enter, you enter Bini again. You said you could lose your money. What did happen? Oh my, I just, you just lost. He gets, he gets some slang. Said we be say one of my guys speak for for where I call him for Bini the, the other day. Me and everyone are saying slang. Said when I quote him, he says what he. Me go say so. Now they change I, I, every time. Now what he? At the first time, one of my guys said the guy young one kind of thing. I said, oh my, what did you just talk? I know which, when that one from come. You know what I'm saying? No, it's what you know. Time, but uh, go. But you just have to, you know, you just have to like keep keep up with it, you know. Thanks, brother. I really appreciate it. You know I me. Mean? I really yeah, appreciate it. So, 
I want to take God back. Una, make una, please. I, I don't listen to talk of my video. Make una go so. I'm not gonna subscribe to the channel. Share them. Una way the yaba brother for Instagram. Make una cheese more. You understand? Make una continue. Make that, make that cheese, make that cheese, make that cheese, make that cheese. Because I don't want, I don't want to see. You know, I'll take this thing because some, sometimes people can just write me like this. Uh, for write me for a few days ago, someone just write me. They just write me say, uh, you know, uh, this is very vague. And did, did, and I said, guy, what, 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 what to be your problem? You been a guy, say you're not a guy. Wait for con, you know, you say, not worry. I, was like, I know you before. What, what did it stop? He say, and I saw so this, and they talk about this, 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 this. And I go say, oh, so you not a fan of that father? He say, no, I ain't, no, I ain't. And I go say, listen, now I can't call on, now I can't call on, I can't call on, I can't call on, the USA, can't call on, I can't like, Explain it to her. I can't say. I can't say. See, 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 see. I don't hate anybody. You understand? But you know me say I don't criticize you sometimes. You understand? Because if I don't, if I just, if I, I don't be yes ma, yes ma, yes ma. But I, I have all the love for my brothers to succeed. You know what I mean? All the love I give love to any any of our brothers who nah, are trying because listen, I know it's not man, the road I, is I not easy. Think, I don't think the people that criticize and insult me. I don't think they have hatred towards me. I, those are the people I literally actually need because every time I look at their hate mail or whatever they insult me for, it's there's always something for me to take home from it. You know, like for someone will tell me that, hey man, um, he's he might be big, but he doesn't have the skills to match up with this. Then I go back and look at my video. I'm like, okay, yeah, he was actually saying the truth. I go back to the gym and I work on it. You know, so as much as I, I, I don't like. Actually, I do like the hatred. To be honest, I'm I'm a crazy like that. I like I like when people insult me. You know, it, I'm a fighter, so I know how to handle stuff like that. You know, I I appreciate it. I appreciate your criticisms. I appreciate your insults. I appreciate the love. I appreciate. By the end of the day, one thing I know for sure is that everybody's supporting me. You know, because we're all Nigerians. You know, you always want your Nigerian brother to do well. Yes, not like you know? like 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 me me. I don't like me. I don't tell some of my guys. You know, say man. And the next big, and the next big team be this one when I come over. Me under the support yeah. now. I understand? Yeah, and me I be una. Nobody say I be person with a bone for Yankee. We just, you know, we just want associate. I associate myself with. I grew up. I grew up on the streets. You know, I grew. I, 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 I trained at National Stadium every day for years. You know, I trained at Police College. I trained at Air Force Base. I ran uh, the tracks from Okwebi. From Balogun bus stop to Okwebi Link Road, on that I did all of that, you know. So I understand where the Nigerian public is coming from, you know. Like so you're, not mad at you're, you're two fights now, upcoming two fights now. Um, after you don't get those fights, like the person you go, uh, person you go fight, uh, now top fifteen, I go be from there. After you don't get, two, um, two, I mean, two fights. It, it's we don't know, you know. I don't make those calls. I have a I have a team that makes those calls. Um, one thing I know is that by end of 2021, I'll be in the top 10 ranks in, in the world. Um, then we can start making the big fights that people want to see. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but, all but, I know. But you having that vision, 2021, that means you yeah, are really, you are, you are really, you, you, know. you are really, you are really serious about this. I mean, like you know me, you know me for three years now. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. yeah but, 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 but looking at other boxers, let's. I don't want to compare, but look at Deontay Water. He took him. Three three fights to even challenge for 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 for, uh, for, for a world title, like to even I get his hands on like it. He has different handlers too. You know, Deontay Wilder was relatively new in boxing at that time, and uh, you also remember Deontay Wilder is not a heavyweight. He made he's really a cruiserweight. You know, so he had to build himself and build his strength, his power, and all that. His his uh, he, he didn't come from an athletic background. He didn't do athletic things before boxing. So he had to build himself. I've done all that. You know, I, I played I played high-level college basketball. I played high-level college football. I played American football in the professional ranks. You know, I just transferred all of that to boxing, learning the skills. And at this point where I'm at right now, people that just started boxing in 2016 are not there. They're probably still amateurs getting knocked out. You know, I am challenging for a world title. I am making the world know that I am here to stay. You know, um, everybody's path is different. I'm telling you where I'm going to be, whether you believe it or not. When I get in 2021, you will see me knocking the door. Well, I'm well, not, I don't, I don't, I don't, you never doubt anyone because, especially someone that is very determined. Whether you doubt like me, you. whether you know, doubt me, no matter. By 2021, 
December, I will be fighting for a title. I, I don't. don't I, 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 I don't doubt you. I don't. I just. Yeah. I just say. I just say. Like you know, like so. People now, for example, um, they be slow learners. You know what I mean? Or they want to take t- things easy. You know. Yeah. You just. You just. You look at that guy. This new guy. I don't know if you know about the guy already. Alan Babish. You know Babish now. Yeah, I know Babish. He's a three and old guy. You Master. see. You see how fast the guy is moving. Yeah. So that guy is very determined. So if you move like that, I see them. I see they move so you don't really get fights too fast. Now you move so before yeah. you know, nah, nah, you got enough for 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 the for the big uh big uh yeah. big uh big big uh, everywhere's uh, uh door. Also, you have to see who is my coach. You know, uh, yeah. not, uh, Glenn Johnson. Have you? you have to know who my coach is. My coach is the real real freaking deal. You know, I I'm trained by Glenn Johnson. What's Glenn Johnson known for? He fought everybody. He knocked out Roy Jones. He beat Tarver. He lost to Bernard Hopkins. He beat everybody. You know, and why? what do they call him? They call him the road warrior. And they call him the road warrior for a reason. So that's the guy that's in my ear every day that I wake up. And I talk to him. I'm with him four hours a day. So if I'm with that guy four hours a day minimum, what do you think I'm thinking? You know, if I'm with a lion, if, a, if I'm a goat, right? And I'm hanging out with lions for years. At the end of the day, as a goat, I'm going to think I'm a lion, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. What that's what I'm true. telling you. In December 2021, I will be fighting for a title or I'll be in the top 10 knocking the doors for a title. And that's so. Whether you me or not, it's your problem. Whether you like me or not, as long as you're going to be watching me and <laughs> Nigeria that I know will support me. Well, Nigeria, well, <clears throat> well me, I, me, me, I support you, so I don't know about it, others, but me, ah, I support me, you I, for I, sure. I love, I love, I love, you know, so, 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 maybe they knock on the door. Not me, even want to say they, they knock on the door. Like, imagine having you, Joshua, George West, a Jack Bar. Oh boy, you not be small, T. You no, know. that is a good fighter, too, man. That man see, want to see. Special. I mean, when I, like, like, I'm just, I'm just imagining something like you, yeah. George West. Uh, uh, Ajakba and Joshua yeah. in the top. Oh boy, yeah. we're like, to, like yeah, we're all going to be there. Ajakba, I know, I know, fighter. Joshua, I know, Joshua has the capacity to sell out, you know, Lego Stadium. What you, where you Ajakba get to that sells, stage, Joshua sells out the Wembley Stadium. And if you can sell Lego Stadium, he, he can sell out Lego Stadium, Abby. If oh, he's yeah. what. Anthony Joshua would sell out. I think. I think Anthony Joshua would sell out the the national stadium in Lagos with foreigners. That's how much of star power he has. I think he'll sell out that stadium with foreigners in it, not even with Lagos. Ah, uh, Nigerian, Nigerian need to be there, man. May, oh, may, may for, what I'm trying to say. May for now, may for may for now go. May for now wait for the for I that think that if Anthony Joshua fights in Lagos, ninety thousand people will literally fly into Lagos. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, he has that much star power. And that's not even talking about the people that are in Lagos that want to see the fight. Yeah. You know, you know even when he went to Nigeria, he hanged around with uh, Dangote. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, the, the richest yeah. black man, that uh, be that one. The, the, the thing about the, the difference between me and Joshua is that I am literally from the streets of Lagos. You know, I would bring all the Malians to fight. You know, so you you even know you even know Malian side. Oh yeah. <laughs> I say I one bring, guy. I would bring all the I would bring the Malian in the Malians. W- one guy, one guy, Jab. My name is Morty. Oh. He said, I, I listen to my. <laughs> he say he yeah. listen to my Nana Mali. You see my you see my comment for uh, for my uh, Nana Mali uh, uh, music video. Oh, yeah, yeah, say, I think I saw that. I did see he, that. he say he listen to Nana Mali. Eh, uh, this, <laughs> he, he, he say this guy. I say listen. It's just a song. What what is wrong with you? Like why are you so sensitive, bro? Oh wow! Yeah. The guy got a jab me. Wrote me on. Uh, he wrote me on uh, on Instagram. Started insulting me and say, "Oh, uh, I thought you were responsible." Uh, I mean, I said, it's just it's, it's a music, bro. Like, what? What is music? Child is a person. He's so responsible. <laughs> Let him go and talk to the government. Now, Let wow! No, no, it's more to know. Ah, should I talk about responsibility? Yeah, so, if you look, if you man, don't get me started. Some some of some of our people get misplaced priorities. So, so sometimes so you just gotta be. I mean, it's it's just frustration that you have to pour it in. So- it's on someone and in somewhere you know it's not their fault you know you just need to you need to believe in something but things are not working out for you you know that's why you're yeah. the easiest for you're the easiest target that's why they come to you and tell you that i think you're responsible you know what i mean yeah. i'm a malian i don't if you like call me responsible that's your problem 
I'm an Arabali <laughs> fan. If if Davido is holding a concert, if Risky is holding a concert, if Bernard is holding a concert and Narmali is going to hold a concert, I will be first in line to the Narmali <laughs> concert. That's how. That's who I am. You know. Uh, so I I I I I I I see your dance move. Eh? You get us oh, where yeah, we're. So, uh, so now nah, don't but get me wrong. I respect the the many people, but. Narmali to me it just speaks to me in a way that nobody speaks to me. You Brother, know, I can't I like, can't wait I can't wait for you to like fight fight maybe in Nigeria man, or somewhere. I mean Yeah, I mean that's that that's in, in, the in, in, in fact I even I can even visualize you you fighting in, in Germany or something like that. Absolutely. I, I just I just want I, I just want to see you I just want to see you in the spotlight because yeah, I think I see I yeah. think what you have, uh, you what you have, your and the energy you bring is very different and that's what makes you unique in a way you know what i yeah. mean yeah your energy is different you know you like but i, I don't like you eh? and, I, I, and i try to tell you so i just want to see I what's like, and I, 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 I mean I, we I, have the I, national I, stadium we have the abuja stadium we have ooh, even if we do it in tesla by logan stadium that's a great stadium to have a fight um we don't have the i mean we have a, an arena in senegal that we can literally have a fight in we have south africa we can have a fight in south africa it's just five hours from Nigeria. I've been to Johannesburg, beautiful place. Um, we have can have a fight in Egypt. We can actually have the fight in Accra, Ghana. You know? Yes, man. There, there's so many places in Africa we can have that fight. We can have the fight in Rwanda. We can go back to Rwanda and have the fight there. We can have the fight in a few it's just Africa. I, I, is, that, that, that's why that's why I'm trying my best, you know, to make sure Nigerian boxing grow. Because I'm basically the only one. I, I, that's why I want more. I want more people from Nigeria, from Nigeria that talks, that try, that talks and prom, like that talks about Nigeria boxing and promotes it. You know, there yeah. is a, there is a, a boxing talk with a day. You know, he, he's a UK born Nigerian, but he mainly talks about general uh, boxing in general. You know, many stuff. But I, I just, I just made, I just, I just focused on Nigerians and Africans. Specifically, you know, uh, boxers yeah. because I just, I just want to see them grow, you know, yeah. and uh, that that that's what must be. Also, don't every get day. it twisted. We have a lot of good boxers in Nigeria, man. Um, there's this guy that I know. He's a heavyweight, but I think he's really a cruiserweight. Imole Ayo, the kid is not bad. You know, he's actually a uh, Sunday Imole. There's another guy, um, Yink. Um, I mean, we have a lot of good boxers in Nigeria, man. Super skilled. They just need an opportunity to get out of the country. And that's what I try to tell them, you know, find a way to get out and just hone your skills because Nigeria is not a place for athletes. Um, as sad as it sounds, it's just the plain truth. Um, anybody yeah. can me, I can go on my Instagram to insult me. You know, I mean, to I mean, I mean we, I, a lot of people know that already in terms of boxing. Yeah, and, uh, Even soccer players, Nigeria is not the place for uh, soccer but, but, but different. We, we get so many soccer stars. Yeah, Nigeria is money soccer. We, but any other time like athletes, Nigeria is not the place. Many, um, many, Niger many Nigerian soccer players, they, they, made, they made it from Nigeria before they, they, they you know. Yeah, they, and it's not, it's not really entirely the, the if of, if, box, if boxing or if boxing if Nigerian boxing boxers had that same opportunity that same support you know one thing about Nigeria is that when it comes to football uh, you know you see everybody stand still to watch yeah. a match between for Nigeria against Ghana yeah. Nigeria against Brazil Nigeria yeah. against England we just love football and I just yeah. wish that Nigeria can uh, you know, show some love to boxing and some other sports because on that sport I'm not getting love like like football guys you I understand that you said it's not I mean it's not a, it's not a right place to be in at least but at the same time the foot there are footballers in Nigeria that made it from Nigeria and then you know yeah, everybody makes it from Nigeria we don't make it in Nigeria you know what I'm saying Everybody makes it from Nigeria, you know. Yeah, and but no, not, no, no, not 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 all of not not all of bosses can say they made it. They made it from Nigeria. I, I don't know one. Yeah, because boxing is not really a mainstream thing anywhere else in the world. You know, like I came to America because I played basketball. You know, there are opportunities for basketball in America, and with what I did, I rerouted my athletic career to football and to boxing, and that's why I am what I am in boxing. Um, I can't leave Nigeria and say I want to go to America to box. You know, like, well, which person in, in, in MIT will listen to that? Like, what are you saying, man? You know? So it, it's a lot harder for boxers to do that. 
because you're not really going to an, you're not going to be a a, a a profitable is it I don't think profitable is the word you're not going to be a, a a contributing member of society in the United States or anywhere else in the world you know because one you're not marketable number two you're going there to get something you're not really going there to give something you know so it, it's much harder I think people need to figure out if Nigeria wants to pour money into any sports they need to pour money into the sports that a sport like boxing a sport like tennis a sp individual sports you know like track you know you're not going to be running track every day you don't know how it's only one event one meet in doha in uh, the pan relays you know it's only going to be those types of meets you know so nigeria needs to start pumping much of their money into individual sports than team sports that are mainstream in other countries where guys can just find their way and help themselves you know? Yeah, that's that's true. That's just my opinion now. Um, Thanks, brother. You don't give me time, man. I'm a small time. I don't feel like you. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I don't. I, I don't. I don't feel people. People. They, people. They, people. They endure. You know what I mean. Okay. So stay blessed, bro. You know, keep yeah. on, keep on pushing hard. You know, keep on. You know, uh, making it. Keep on training. Keep on. Keep up with the with the, with the good work you're doing. So I really appreciate it, bro. So your last your last uh, statement to the fans to the people who want to support you the people who, who, who don't know you yet. just just, just your, your your message to the fans to the um, boxing I fans in general thank, Nigerian fans <laughs> I just want to <laughs> thank everybody uh, for the support I've gotten from Nigeria it's been amazing I, I'm, Nigerians have literally put me over the map. I've been an underground boxer for a long time. I've been trying to, you know, methodically and aesthetically rise up the rankings. But since Nigerians know about me, they've kind of like driven me to another level. You know, I'm now, I'm slowly becoming a, a household name, you know, and uh, it's a blessing that not everybody is privileged to have. And it happened because um, of my Nigerian fan base. Um, you guys don't really know your power, but your power is really, really, um, is really there and it shows. Um, I want to thank everybody, the all the people that love me. I want to thank everybody that hate me. I want to thank all those that send me lovely message on Instagram. Um, I really want to especially thank all those that insult me and send me all the hate messages on Instagram. Um, I know that you're not coming from a bad place, but you're coming from a place where you really want me to improve. And uh, I, I, I see most of them. I don't see all of them, but the most of them, the most of the hate messages I, I receive, I take it to the gym and I work on those things that you guys want me to get better at. And uh, it, as much as, I, I mean, I'm not sure, I know they talk to Muna to start loving me. I want you guys to criticize me as much as you can, you know, because without the criticisms, I'm going to go over my head and I'm going to think I'm the next best thing. And that's how I get beat. But the more criticisms I get, you know, the more I will get better because I've only gotten better today because I've been criticized by you, um, the media, my coaches, my friends, you know. So I appreciate all of you, man. And uh, you guys follow me on Instagram because, you know, that's where that's where the most of the social media uh, happens today. That's where the more media happens. I'm going to be posting more content of my training, my training methods. Um, the things I do with strength and conditioning, my fights, uh, fight promos. I announce most of my fights on social media and most of the results and the highlights from them. So follow me on social media, Rafael on the squad with Jerry, R A P H A E L on the squad. I have it on the stream, bro, on the screen. So exactly. the people are saying. Yeah, say well, um, so, on a listen, yes, on a listen, yes, go I'm follow Rafael Akbar Jerry. I beg, I beg, I beg, I follow, I beg, I beg, I beg, I follow me as well for both of them. Yeah. I want to reach one came here to do show for, for, and I want to thank you too, man. I really want to thank you, Raymond. You know, you've been very, very helpful. You've been trying to, you know, push the boxing media thing, you know, and I know it really helps a lot of people. Actually, I was at a party um, two weeks ago, I think it was the Labor Day weekend, and somebody came to me and was like, yo, you're Raphael, right? I was like, yeah, what's going on? He's like, yeah, I, I watched you from Boxing Block Center, man. You're like a star. I'm like, bro, I know you stop, but that's when I knew the importance <laughs> of you, you know, because a lot of people do watch you, you know, a lot of people from all around the world. I've, I've had two people already come to me to tell me that, oh, you're the one they talk about 
the one that a boxing block center talks about. So I want to say that your platform is really, really helpful to boxers. Bro, yeah. let me. Let, I, I don't know if you. I don't know if you saw the video. Like, do you know when I went to the Nigerian embassy in uh, the Hague, the Hague in uh, yeah. our Netherlands? I met someone there unexpectedly that, that recognized me through my voice. Oh really? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I got the video. The video is uh, is, is I upload the video. It's on YouTube right now. Yeah. Like, are you fan of me? He said, "Whoa." He said, "I, I mean, he said, I, I, I know this voice. Where you? I mean, where, 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 where do you live? Like, I was like, oh my god, I was it's so crazy. Yeah. I don't like, I don't like you. I said to him, I said, I, I, I said, you see that? Now I make a good person do good. If those are a bad person, okay, some some haters, you know, go to say now. So I do this. Work up us. Yeah, no, nah, like the guy, you know, embrace me like a, like a brother. I'm probably gonna meet him soon, you know, and then we're gonna do some stuff together. Not not so they be, so they be. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Bro. Um, one last thing, I'll be fighting January twenty three here in Miami, Florida. Um, the beautiful thing about the event is that it's gonna be live and free on YouTube. Um. YouTube uh, is going to be on Instagram. I think it's going to be on Road Warrior Promotions, uh, uh, the Facebook page. It's going to be on the Road Warrior Promotions um, YouTube page. And you can watch it out there for free and watch your boy and support your boy from afar. And uh, I can promise it's going to be a good fight. Um, like I said, by the twenty by December 2021 and 2022, Nigeria will be having a champion, a world champion in the making or in the books. Thanks, brother. I really appreciate it. So, guys, go follow Rafa Kwajiri on Instagram. Support our brother. You know, let's back him up. You know, the hurricane. But he said it need not be hurricane yet. Too. But I the call that one. First, I go look for our nick. Our nickname well, 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 call him as well. So I know yeah. say that one. That one. That one. That one. I mean, now let me work with the call that one. Just <laughs> first, if I say, if people give a one one name, say we say we one night, one night, January we say you know, where you feel yourself, your head will bust. <laughs> That's what I, I respect you a lot, man. Cheers, right, man. bro. Appreciate you. Cheers. So, guys, um, there you have it uh, with Rafa Kbejuri. You know, and um, it's always nice to have a conversation with our brothers. And for those of you guys who are watching right now, a lot of you don't share, subscribe, go follow me on Instagram at Boss Blow Center. On Twitter, I'll post as well. Facebook, I'll post as well. God bless you all. Cheers.